any competent historian can tell you that ancient Rome had a serious problem with homosexuality. In fact, many have stated over the years that it was homosexuality that caused Rome to fall. And yes, some will claim it's not true, even though many homosexual websites do admit Rome had homosexual soldiers and political leaders in their day. In fact, do a bit more research and you'll find that Pompeii was a homosexual resort for the soldiers. And it was destroyed by God for what those soldiers did in 70 AD. But that's a whole nother video. If you're a student of prophecy, you know that Daniel was speaking of the Roman Catholic Church when he stated the following in Daniel chapter 11, verse 37. He said, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. The homosexual movement of today finally confirms why the Vatican demands celibacy of their priests. As is obvious, prophecy says the Vatican prelates will be homosexual. In modern times alone, we have witnessed how Roman Catholic priests love to molest little boys. And we also know about homosexuals that got married and adopted boys to do the same. So this appears to be the norm for many homosexuals. We also have documented evidence that the AIDS crisis was first found in the Vatican. The fact the priests were at one time dying of AIDS 11 times greater than anyone else proves this hands down. Scientific fact is, as we saw with Typhoid Mary, tracing the disease back to its source is not that difficult to do. But why the false doctrine of celibacy? And yes, it is a false doctrine, in that the Bible clearly states Peter, who Rome falsely claims was the first pope, was in fact married to a woman. And Paul the Apostle stated that for all those seeking to be pastors should be the husband of one wife. And yes, this also exposes the false doctrines of polygamy found in the Mormon Church. As we see today, homosexuals have boldly and quite openly targeted Christians. They literally seek them out so as to harass them and force them out of business out of sheer hatred for the Lord we worship. Even though there are many pro-homosexual businesses out there that will marry and even make cakes for homosexuals, they still target the Christian businesses to persecute them. Has Rome also shown a bold hatred for Christians? Well, yes, they have. In fact, their favored Pope of the day, John Paul II, admitted in his globally broadcast Mia Culpa that the Vatican did in fact kill hundreds of millions of Christians in their prophesied and now historically documented past. See Fox's Book of Martyrs for the not-so-easy-to-read details on many of these torturous acts of the Roman Catholic Vatican. Recently, we have also seen the present Pope demanding homosexual marriage be allowed. Before being placed as Pope by his fellow prelates, he made it possible for homosexuals to actually have civil unions in Argentina. So why is he doing this? Well, I believe the comments of a homosexual activist will make it crystal clear. It has to do with something that happened 6,000 years ago. But listen to what this woman says. Um, I, um, I mean, I agree. It's a no-brainer that, uh, that we should have the right to marry. But uh, I also think equally that it's a no-brainer that the institution of marriage should not exist. So uh, <laughs> that, uh, that causes my brain some trouble. Uh, and, um, and part of it, why it causes me trouble is because uh, fighting for gay marriage generally involves lying about what we're going to do with marriage when we get there. You know, because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change. And that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change, and it should change. Um, and again, I, I don't think it should exist. Um, and um, I don't like uh, taking part in, in creating fictions about, about my life. That's sort of not what I had in mind when I came out 30 years ago. Okay. If you read your Bible, you know the serpent in the garden was, of course, Satan. That fallen angel knows all too well about the fact that marriage was created and sanctified in the Garden of Eden by the Lord and Creator himself. That being the case, 
We know that his desire to destroy mankind and the sanctity of marriage was his agenda since day one. So all one needs to do today is to do just a little bit of research to find out who it is that seeks to destroy marriage at the present time. Because we know Satan has never changed his agenda against the God of the Bible. Well, we just heard from a lesbian activist that this is in fact the agenda of the present day homosexual community. And their actions against marriage and any business associated with Christian weddings has become boldly apparent lately. But looking at the doctrine of celibacy in the Vatican confirms where this demon set up shop first. As the prophet Daniel predicted, the Vatican prelates are to be, for the most part, homosexual. But have you noticed how well celibacy works towards that end? We know homosexuals hate Christians. The homosexual Roman soldiers hated them so much they fed them to the lions. The homosexual Vatican prelates hated them so much that they killed 500 million of them. And the homosexual community of today hates them so much that they are forcing politicians to pass laws that go directly against Christian morals. But notice this. If a man seeks the office of priest in Roman Catholicism, he is hit with the false doctrine of celibacy. As most are already aware, priests don't become pedophiles. Pedophiles actually become Catholic priests because they know Rome will protect them. However, on occasion, a heterosexual man will actually seek the office of the priesthood. When this happens, it can be a benefit to Rome as well as a trophy for Satan. If by chance the priest is heterosexual, he is then tormented with the lusts of the flesh for decades due to Rome's demonic doctrine of celibacy. This will then cause one of three things to happen. Number one, the man can leave the priesthood, which not only blesses the man, it also benefits Rome in that they prefer homosexuals in their Vatican clubhouse, as the prophecy states. Sadly, the priest leaving is rarely the case, though. Number two, the man is lured into homosexuality by his fellow priests, and then Rome can revel in his conversion in a multitude of perverted ways, which in turn grants Satan yet another soul for hellfire. Or number three, the man stays a heterosexual, but then bows to the uncontrollable urges of the flesh and fornicates, or even commits adultery, granting Satan another trophy. Bottom line is this, Marriage was instituted in Eden by the Lord, and Satan purposely sought to separate Eve from Adam in that marriage 6,000 years ago. To this day, the divorce rate has been steadily growing upwards, and now we see Rome working in unison with the homosexual community to help Satan do as he planned 6,000 years ago. Will they be successful? Well, the prophecy does state it will be as it was in the days of Lot when Jesus returns, does it not? In fact, one can see how successful Rome will be by how they were used by Satan to attack the other sacrament that was instituted in Eden 6,000 years ago as well. Yes, I am speaking of the Seventh-day Sabbath. In fact, the Vatican admits in writing they changed the Sabbath that was never truly changed by God. The Church of Rome states in writing that the Sunday is purely a creation of the Catholic Church. They also state Sunday is the law of the Catholic Church alone. And then, once again, they state, Is not every Christian obliged to sanctify Sunday and to abstain on that day from unnecessary servile work? Is not the observance of this law among the most prominent of our sacred duties? But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. And then finally they say, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. In the Garden of Eden, we see two sacraments given to man by the Creator Himself. We then see Satan in that garden deceiving mankind so as to have him join him in damnation. And now, right before the end, we see Satan once again doing all he can to attack the God of the Bible by focusing on those blessed sacraments designed to give man the rest and peace promised him by his Creator. And who is this fallen angel using as his pawn to lock down the success today? The Roman Catholic Church. Thank you for watching. God bless.